Fixing a supply line leak on a commode. William Hovey Smith, 2021. This is Hovey Smith, the backyard sportsman. Well, I don't usually start my video with me sitting on a commode, but I am today. Uh, the reason is we have serious bathroom trauma. In fact, my commode is leaking water onto the floor, as you will shortly see, and consequently has started a swelling in the press board underneath my carpet. So that carpet has to come up, that press board has to be replaced, and the leak situation solved. It took me a little while to find out exactly what was going on. And as it turns out, the leak is not from the bathroom bowl, and it's not from the seal around the bottom here. The leak originates at this joint right there. And that's where I need to stop it. And I have, of course, turned off the water, but uh, nonetheless, anytime I turn it on again to do whatever I need to do with water, uh, this joint begins to seep again. So I'm going to have to replace this part. Uh, it does no good to turn the valve on or off, but it's pretty well frozen anyway. Uh, I do have some iron in my water, and it is corrosive on brass, and no doubt this valve is sealed. This is plastic, which is done all right, and may be able to salvage this tube, but need a new valve assembly, and need new fittings, and need new pipe, likely, right down there. To prevent further damage, and having to replace even more of the press board and allow this carpet to dry, I need to take the carpet up. Now there is a tack strip along the corner, along the baseboard. And that's what the carpet has been driven into and nailed to. Consequently, I need to take a tool and separate the carpet from the baseboard and start pulling it forward and lapping it up in the middle of the room to allow it to dry and me to be able to get to the problem and actually replace that valve and those sections of pipe. In a follow-up video, I make a carpet removal tool in my knife shop, and this video will show you actually how to make a knife. We now have the materials and tools gathered for our commode repair. And what happened was, this valve failed and you can see here this is where it was leaking and actually uh, corrosion uh, caused a pit in it and so it didn't really pour water but there was a steady drip 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 down that got in my carpet and got in my floor and uh, all kinds of stuff that was evil now, if you find this, this is sitting back of your commode, probably against a wall, something like this. And feel around that valve. And if you feel wet, then okay, that valve is most likely your problem, because it's PVC, unless it freezes or breaks, which really requires some real stress, uh, is not likely the problem. Now, you should do what I did not do. As soon as you identify the leak in your commode, go underneath the house, cut this off. This is a cap. And take that cap and cement it on top of your water pipe. And that way you will not use a commode, but you'll have water in the rest of the house until you can get around to fixing it. As it turns out, this almost always happens on a weekend. Uh, but in my small rural area, a uh, few places are available to get spare parts. 
And speaking of spare parts, this is a peculiar valve that mates up with this particular plastic tubing, or at least this size tubing. It might be copper, either way. And you can find these, as I did here, but they are scarcer than the regular valves which connect water pipe to water pipe size, like you would use in your sink, for example. So uh, beware that you do get exactly the right kind of valve before you get out of the house and put it in and all this kind of stuff and find you can't couple it up. What we're going to do is we're going to salvage this piece of pipe because never know when I might need another little hunk. Cut this one approximately two inches longer so it's higher up and I can see it better and glue everything together. I'm using a little Dremel tool to cut and face up this pipe because this is what I'm going to use underneath the house. And this is what I mean by facing up. So you get as flat a cut as possible. We're now going to put some purple primer and some cement and this threaded coupling joint onto this piece of pipe. These lids are terribly difficult to get off, so um, it's nice to have a set of vice grips around to give you some help in removing them. They oftentimes will not just twist off with the fingers. Put you some goop on there. Then slide your fitting on. Twist it in as tight as it'll go. It doesn't hurt to give it a little tap. Okay, that's on there, guys. While that is drying, and I have all my tools ready, I can trim this piece of pipe here. This was the original length, so I want to go at least an inch more down to about here. And that cleans that up pretty good. Now one thing to watch out for about these Dremel tools, particularly since I'm going to take it under the house, is these are fragile. And if you make a crawl under a house, <laughs> it's very easy to break these things, break these wheels. But uh, I've got an electrical connection on my light that I have hanging under the house, 
so I can hook this up and use it down there. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, this is setting up pretty good. Give it just a few more minutes, but that's almost there. This gooey stuff I'm applying is pipe thread compound, and it'll help ensure that the seal is good. This is, I don't know how many years old. Uh, usually it's not quite so grody as this when you buy it new. Okay. Now we can start threading here. And it's not going on quite straight, so I want to make sure I get it started straight here. I lost a segment of the video here where I reclamped a threaded fitting into the vise and use a pipe wrench to tighten the valve. We pull the carpet back. As you can see, the padding is still down there. And we will replace this padding and dry our carpet. But that will be another time. Uh, right now, we're worried about the commode. This is press board, plywood. And carpet padding. And for now, we'll see if this will go down the hole. And it does. Okay. So, that much is success. We're going to connect this up here and then connect it underneath. Give me a little more light down there in the work area so we can see what's going on. Not that it makes for a very attractive picture, however. Going to take this and trim it off square again. A pocket knife did not do a good job of it. This fitting is a compression fitting. The more you tighten this, the more compression you place on this hose here, and the better the seal. I'm going to need two wrenches to tighten it. And in a case like this, you do just about everything but hold it with the teeth. All right, that's all the way in there. And the tightening is starting. Clamp it here. Sounds like we're doing some good there, guys. You're compressing metal to metal, so that's what's causing all the trauma there. Uh, 
Okay, squeaking like a mouse, that's good. That's brass deforming. All right, I think that's the last squeak. All right. We'll discover when we give it a smoke test and turn the water on if that actually did uh, make a watertight seal. And the little piece of flashing down there, I cleaned that up while I had it off. Uh, the second time in my lifetime I've done that. It's going to be difficult for me to show you the work without me getting in the way. But there you see my wrapped pipe, then the vertical going up, and where it's now being overlapped with the one I pushed down through the floor. So now, you can see what we're going to be doing. We now have our repair done. So by the time I clean up and get things out of here, that will be set, and we can actually have some water in the house. Well, it's time for what we can call a smoke test. I'm going to put a wrap of toilet tissue around the bottom and turn on the water and see what happens. Toilet tissue stays dry, we're in good shape. I'm an author and have done a number of outdoor books that you see here and also a couple of business books. My most recent book is Make Your Own Job Anytime, Anywhere, at Any Age. In this book, I advocate that you start your own jobs, even if you're working, so that you have something that you develop that you own. So that should you be laid off from work, or need work as a teenager, or even as an older person want something useful to do, where you can create your own job anytime, anywhere, at any age. There we go. There's no sign of any dampening on the toilet paper. Our repair is a success. We now have water in the house. Roof! As well as a functional commode, which most people think is a vital necessity. And so it is. Now that this has been completed, I can be about repairing the damage and getting up the water-soaked padding for my carpet, uh, putting down new, probably replacing some press board in the floor, and so on and so on. Uh, this old house is built solid. As you may have noticed underneath, uh, that sill is about 16 inches by 12 inches. It's no small thing. In the original construction of the house, there's not a two by four to be seen. No lumber that small was used except for door framing and molding and lathing in the walls. Now this tool, which I made in my shop, is going to be used to help me take up this sodden carpet backing and getting it out of here, which is something I'll start in a few minutes. But now, this is Hobie Smith. Reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe. Goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. Doing this repair saved me about $150 in plumbing fees, even here in rural Georgia. I can't imagine what it would be like in a metro area. The obvious thing I should have done was to go ahead and capped off that line first, and then I would have had water in the house. 
For more information on my books, blogs, and other activities, go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. To find out more about my new business book, Make Your Own Job, go to createyourownjobsecurity.com. Hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Goodbye and God bless.